everyone. This is Erin from Celebrates. We're introducing our second mini album, Blank. Yeah, our first one is a huge success. This time we're doing something a little bit more complicated. We think you guys have migrated to something a little bit more challenging. So we're introducing our 8 by 8 mini album, Blank. Uh, ultimately, the size of flaps. Sample one on the cover. It's this little one that's made for my daughter's English teacher who's just had a baby. So it's, it's really practical, cute little things. To make the mini album, all you need is a mini album pack. You need a scoreboard, metal ruler, craft knife. If you have a mice mid jig, it's super handy. If not, just a metal ruler is fine. Um, you'll need the extra strength tape and then the narrow tape. A pencil is also handy, obviously scissors and a scoring tool. Let's get started. In your pack, you have got a lot going on in here. It's all marked here. If we do it step by step, super easy. Flip it over. We're going to start with the gray wall. So just take that out so we don't get confused. You should have two large pieces and one small piece. Same as our previous design. Those are going to be your hard covers. Let's you know what those are for. Then we're going to move on to a piece called E. So take them all out. So you'll see they are all clearly marked. You have eight pieces of C. You have 10 pieces of G. You have numerous different pieces, D, E, F, and H, all in one bundle. They are given the dimensions are given there. So we are going to need piece E. So we find E, 26 by 23. These nice long ones, if I remember correctly. No, these ones. Check. Centimeters, so it'll be 26 centimeters by 23 centimeters. If you're working inches, it is 10 and a quarter by 9. F. And they two pieces of these. So, nice, straightforward, simple task. Just want to move this up the way. So, these are going to be your outer pieces on your cover. To make it a little easier, you can tape them together as one unit. Let's just line them up nicely, top and bottom, nice and snug together. The more pieces of tape you put across here, the stronger it is, but you don't have to go too crazy because we are going to stick it onto the gray board. Because I'm demoing it, I'm going to go quite crazy because I don't want to make a mess up. And I'm just using the thin one here. So I'll use the stronger tape on the next step. Okay, so this is going to be on the outer of these, just so you can see how it's all going to come together. All right, roughly like that. So the first step is going to be your margin or your spine. This is where I use red tape to assemble the actual album. I'm a little bit funny. If you are a bit fussy with your albums, you'll see on the gray board, it's been dark cut. So there's a smooth sort of side and then a sharp edge side. I like to have my smooth sort of cut side. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, it's so fine. But you can see where they've pushed down and where it's ended up sharp. I like the smooth side on the outside of my album. Less likely the paper will tear, crack. It's against a smoother side. Again, with the outer of your album, more is better. Unless you know who's handling your album, but in most cases, somebody you don't necessarily know might handle your album and might not be as gentle as they need to be. 
So rather make them nice and sturdy and then you don't have to worry. So as you can see, I'm using my mat. Once it's on, it should be go up to 52 centimeters. Half of 52 is 26. That would be a halfway line, which is right. And we're going to plant that in the middle and in the middle like that. Just to get the extra strength, I'm removing the protective layer of the joining pieces. Albums take quite some time, but you really should put some effort into the base of the album. There's no point decorating this beautiful album that's not going to last. So take your time getting the foundations right. And then with all that effort you put in with everything else, it still stays together. This paper's holding too tight. Really painful to watch. Sorry. All right. So we found our center mark of 26. The two pieces join. So we're going to center it, top and bottom. So it should be around the 22, 29 centimeter mark, hopefully, which is nice and flat. And then that little trick Sandy taught us on our online class. No create our spaces. So this is the very narrow, just the normal double-sided tape doesn't get extra strength. It's just creating a little spaces before we put our front and back onto our albums. Yeah, so now you've got a nice space. You're gonna line that up top and bottom, but flush against that tape. I know it's very hard to see, the tape on the camera, but it's, it's just this narrow one. I think it's six mils. Double check. Yeah, six mil tape. Right, so we're going to now put the red tape on the card. Remember when it's die cuts again? It's not necessary, it's just a little thing I have. I like to do size as close to the edge as possible. Especially the scrape board does separate if you're using this thick, this strong tape. So just be a little bit careful. So I've made a few lifts already. More tape the merrier. You are welcome to use glue if you prefer. Glue may cause bubbling on the paper. Tape keeps everything nice and dry and then your paper won't bubble. It is high risk using red tape because once it's down, it's down. But the effect is much better. So we're going to do that with both pieces. video you're welcome to just pause fast forward whatever's needed this is more for just for reference so you can just save or save the link to if you ever get stuck on how to assemble it's, quite, it's very similar actually exactly the same to our very first little meeting from Joints in the middle. But no one's going to see this part, so you don't have to be. 
straight and neat and tidy. As you can see, I'm not. Okay, these are squares, so it doesn't matter which way you put them. One less thing to worry about. I'm just strip, take the layers off. If you're hearing a funny noise in the background, it's quite early here in Jeffrey's Bay, but the wind is already picking up. So that funny noise in the background is just the wind. For those who don't know Jeffrey's Bay, we're a coastal town. And it's very, very windy. People think Cape Town's windy. Yes, they get extreme wind, but I think we can compete with that. Okay, so you've got your little plastic thing on the side. The ruler just helps keep it nice and straight. And you've got yourself a guideline on the side and the bottom. Down there. Nice and easy. The more you make albums, the easier they become as well. For those of you fans of album making, there's quite a few really great mini album creators in South Africa and Australia, which I'm not too familiar with the UK market yet. Um, and I'm sure you'll be able to find inspiration on their pages, their Facebook pages. There's really some amazing talent out there. But I admit most of my mini album Techniques have been learned from Sandy, from Backyard Scrappers. She is like a mini album guru. A class actually was going to be with her. So there we go. That's paper together. And there. Next step is much easier if you have a Mites Magic. So a Mites Magic is just a little spacer tool to help cut your corners. So we just take craft knife and do that. If you don't have a mice and a clip tool, you'll need a metal ruler and leave a small space on the corner between the gray board and the paper. So you've still got a piece there and you're gonna use a craft knife and cut off each of the four corners. I'm gonna use my mice and jig with the 90 degree angle on there, holding it in by the gray and just slicing off the corners. Makes it really simple and easy. This is also easy with a metal ruler, but you're not guaranteed to have the same angle. Again, it's not vital. No one's really going to see it. But if something makes your life easier, why not? There you go. We're going to take the red tape again. Put it right against the top edge. Bottom edge. To get it nice and straight, I'll pull a long strip. Don't stick it down. Line it up first, then stick it down onto the paper. Looks nice and straight. Okay, so that's the top and bottom edges of the paper. Just take this extra bit here. Just to be double safe. I'm going to put on the edges of the gray board as well. 
I have young children and handle my albums. So the more tape, the better. Top side. While we're here, I'm just going to put it on the side as well. We work with red tape. This red tape. Going to have a little bit later. Right. And now these little zips that Sandy taught us, just lift them up a little bit. You have to take it completely off, just so you can grab them later. They put it up with two little strings. And we're going to work on one side, top or bottom, doesn't matter which one. So on both the paper and the grave mark. around. Nice easy hack to get it straight. Take the whole page and you just push it up 90 degrees and then 180 degrees. Push down. And there you have that edge. I just like to be sure that it's nice and flush. Down nicely, so I take my scoring tool and I'm just pushing down a little bit more. I'm going to do the same to the opposite side. This one's going to come off today. Paper. And then the same as last time. 90 degrees, 180 degrees. Push down. That's what's happening here. And then we're just going to same again. From the bottom. Okay, now we're just going to tuck in these corners. So you go your 
fold into your drawing tool and just go around the corner like that. Or bend a little piece of the paper over. That was your extra little space to left. Might as well use it for you. If you use your new ruler, that's the space that you left deliberately. And now you've tucked those corners in. And we're going to do the same with the sides. Ninety degrees, one eighty degrees. This side, ninety degrees. That's the outside of your album covered. Freaking easy. You just put that aside for now. Try and clear some space here. Make it neater. Next thing we're going to work on is the hinge. The hinge, you're going to need your scoring board, your scoring tool, and your actual pack, like the mini album pack, the cover. And we are going to need piece H. So piece H is the 28 by 18. So if I get right, 28 centimeters, yep, by 18 and a half. There we go. So in inches, that is roughly, your around 11 inches by seven and a quarter roughly. Okay, so Venice has made this super, super easy for us. On your cover, the bottom has got this scoring ruler, which makes life so much easier for us. Doesn't matter if you have an inches scoreboard, a centimeter scoreboard, it really makes us so much easier. So I'm gonna show you a little hack just we cover both sides, whether you have an inch or a centimeter scoreboard. So the ruler here is done for you. I'm just gonna line up my piece of paper with either side of the black strip on that ruler that Dennis has created for us. And I'm just gonna put a little pencil mark where it says score. Really, really easy. A little pencil mark like that. So yeah, it's got the measurements if you want to go and actually measure yourself. But as I've told most of the people, like if it taught, quite a lazy scrapper. They said it's an easier way, quicker way. You're welcome to do it. I will definitely do it. Now we're going to get your scoreboard, and we don't even have to look at the measurements. You're looking at your pencil marks. Doesn't matter where you put on your scoreboard. Just make sure your pencil mark that you're working on is on. The groove for the school. So you're just going to go along with your pencil mark. Doesn't line up perfectly, move it so it lines up nicely. And again, line. It's quite a few scoring marks. And it'll all make sense in a minute. It's really nice not having to think, just use little pencil markings. Again, not having to worry whether it's centimeters or inches, just use your ruler's there to make life easier. Crafts aren't supposed to be stressful, it's supposed to be fun. And I've got to say that little ruler idea of Dennis's was fantastic. It does take the stress out of it. really see they've all been scored as per the ruler. 
I'm going to show you another little hack before we go and do folder scoring. I'm going to go put one layer of the tape. Okay, so on the first, you'll see when you've done your scoring that there's narrow strips and there's broader strips. Start off with an extra broad strip, then it goes to a narrow strip, narrow strip, and then slightly broader strip. So I'm going to put tape on the first of each set of two narrow strips. What I'm talking about when I'm done here. It's nice and flat, it just makes life easier. Mm -hmm. okay, I'm going right to the edge. So this is the hinge, it's going to be moving quite a lot. Dangerous of cross now, so readers just help me not cut something I'm not supposed to. Right, so as you can see, first narrow, left, larger narrow. Then we're going to just fold on all the score lines, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, all the way. Constantina. Is anything going? Now, ultimately, what we're wanting to do is put the red tape part onto the next the one next to it that hasn't been taped. So, the red tape here, no tape there, and it's going to be folded onto that. So, I'm just going to Make sure all my folds are nice and clean before I go ahead and do that. Just start with one. What are we doing? It's lifting up the large panel with the skinny, with the narrow strip and placing it onto the narrow strip next to it. When you open it up, that's, those two narrow strips are missing. They're on the back here. So I'm going to do it with the other ones. Same concept. So the tape now, let's fold it onto the other narrow strip and push back so now it's disappeared again. Then, so narrow strip with tape let's fold it onto the narrow strip without tape push down and it's disappeared again and then the last one. This is the most complicated part of this album. So it's really not that hard. Okay, the tape again onto the section that's not taped. And it's disappeared again. So that large piece of paper that starts at you know, 28, yeah, 28 centimeters is now sitting at 18 centimeters because you have these hidden little flappies behind. These are your attachments for your pages within your album. I'm going to put this in our album now.
And I just strip these little zips off. Don't need those anymore. I just want to show you what happens. So the section that has been folded from first fold to last fold is about six and a half centimeters or roughly two and a half inches. That's going to fit into your spinal section of the base of your album. So it's going to go in like that. So what I'm going to do, this part is going to be needing a lot of support. Right on the edge here. This is definitely one of the cases of more tape than area. If you have thicker red tape, go for it. Use a thicker red tape. I'm just nervous of red tape. Just to work in small sections at a time. Okay, the spine is a little bit narrower in height than the actual album itself. So you will have a little bit of gray board exposed. That's right. So don't panic. I'm going to go this edge as well on the back and the front edges. Spine. So all these funny little pieces sticking out. We're going to flip it right over and put tape on the back. So where the little flaps aren't. Put tape. Yeah. And going quite over the top of the tape because as I said I have children who handle my albums. It must be funny, some adults also can be a bit rough. They don't understand but that's quite interesting thing. We are ready to tape that in place. Got tape sticking out here. Let's make a little break. I guess tape comes off nicely from there. Much better. This is a nice thing to do if you're feeling like being creative but you're not really inspired. Just grab one of these and make it up so when you're inspired, the album's ready waiting for you to do your next project. So we're going to center it. And put it down. Just down nicely. Right. Next piece we are looking for will be this is E. So there's two pieces of E, they're 26 by 23 centimeters. So, so I don't think I have the right piece, or do I? Let 
Let's see. Sorry, you're needing um, piece D, 20 by 20. There should be two of them. Yeah, that's right. Sorry, I'm confusing myself here. 20 by 20s. So in inches, that is eight inches. Eight by eight, the square pieces. And they're going to finish up the inside of your album. So again, the tape still in. Press the edge as possible. This is becoming so nice. See, the sign is the most complicated part. And as you can see, it's really not that bad. Just got to do baby steps. And next thing you know, you're done. This is only the second time I'm making this type of album. And each time, as it's only been twice, it gets so much easier from the first time to this time. So by the third one, we know exactly what pieces I need off my heart. So you can start visualizing what you're doing. So please don't be put off by your first one if you think it was too complicated. Give it a go again. See what you think the second time around. Many albums make beautiful wedding gifts. The one I showed earlier was for my daughter's teacher who's just had a baby. So baby showers, births, really nice just in general. I think something you can look at over and over and over again. Stripping it down so it doesn't look like I was doing earlier. Right. Do one piece at a time. In a square, so it doesn't matter which way you put it on. All white collar stock, so there's no back and front. Makes life so much easier. I don't have to worry about patterns and size. This piece is going to go square to the back piece overlapping the spine. That's neat. The same on the other side. That was another little, little hack. The tape's lifting, just push it down nicely before you try lift. Protective layer, it seems to come off much easier. This one's going to line up square on the front gray piece. Now that is the inside of your album. Next step is going to be the actual pages. So not a bad start. Here's your spine. And put 
this aside for now and we can move on our pages. We will be needing these pieces. Let me just make sure of that. Sorry. We are needing pieces C. Pieces C. So they are 20.5 centimeters by 19 centimeters or eight inches by seven and a half inches. There should be eight pieces of them. That's what gave it away, which size it was. I need eight pieces of something. Now these are going to be our base of our pocket uh, pages. So the inside of our album is eight by eight. I mean, our, sorry, outside of our album is eight by eight. So the inside has to be slightly smaller. You'll see this is seven and a half by eight. We need the pages to be square. So you need to score at seven and a half. So take each page of the eight and score at seven and a half on the long side. So within the score section is a square. Put it in my square. See? Now you can see that's a square. All eight of them. Let's keep going. A little factory. Give it another one. Give it another one. And give it another one. You got your eight pieces all scored to be squares at seven and a half. I'm just going to make these folds nice and neat. Make a lot easier later on. Let's see exactly why. So they are now all scored. I'm going to use tape. You've got them, you fold your score on top of your page, make it the, eight, the seven and a half by seven and a half. We're going to put tape on each score. Repetition. So that's on all eight sheets. Fold it down.
easier to fade it on. Put the tip down. and ready to go. Now I come back to my album and we're going to put tape on these little stick out pieces on our spine. So tape. Using quite a bit of red tape. This album's not going to go off. And we're going to flip all the flaps over and do the same on the other side. Awkward. I'm just going to flip it over to make it easier for myself. There we go. So each flap has got tape on both sides. Rugby still not sure what I mean. That's the there and there. You can clearly see what I mean. So you can see where we're going. There are eight pieces that we really put tape on that we've scored. They are going to go, one's going to have the tape on the left hand side, and the other one's going to be on the right hand side, but flipped over. So you're going to end up ultimately sticking these two together to form a pocket, but they need to be on one of these, which makes life a little tricky. So we're going to attach one first. I choose to be the front one, Let's start at the back of it. Get that one piece. Remember, you don't want to put anything on the score itself. Otherwise, it's not going to move that way. It's a little bit tricky to start with as you get into it. Yeah, let's open up that. I'm going to do the same with each one. So I'm putting the tape at the top of these ones. And then when I turn it over, I'm going to put tape at the bottom. Oh, just the other way around. Yeah, just so I can show you in the meantime. So the other one, on the front side, we're going to be putting the tape this way. It doesn't matter if we do it first. But... Let's go back to what I was saying. The front side. Or not. Okay, so now we've done two top, two bottom, and we're going to do the opposite now. So 
stretch your tape. First of all, we're just going to remove that. And then we're going to fold this one down. So that gets your fold sorted. And we're going to remove this one as well. So now you've got a square. Now you're going to take another piece. Now your tape just needs to come to the bottom. So I'm not even going to take the protective layer off yet. I'm going to line this up. This piece. I'm trying not to get my head in the camera. Okay, so lining up side and top. Before you push all the way down the side, I would recommend then taking up your tape because I know you're lining up. Folding it back and putting it in place. So now you have a page with a pocket. All right, so we're going to do the same again. Take the side protective layer off. Hold down the score of the page. Remove the protective layer on the page itself. Take another piece of tape that's going to go at the bottom. And line up the top and the side. Being careful of the double sided tape. So then that's another little hack for you, just put something over the tape that will come off without leaving anything behind. So I can work with a smaller space. Okay. I'll push all the way down. I'm going to remove this one. Second page, flap pocket done. Now, to do the reverse, these ones are put on the wrong way, right? Or the one side first rather than the other. Just to show you how it's done, so we're going to flip it over to find the central tape on the spine, remove the tape, lift up the flap, remove the tape. This time, the tape on these ones. It's going to be towards the top of the back. So again, I'm going to use something to make my space smaller to work with. Lining up this time the bottom edge and the side. Line up, remove that. Or pushing all the way up, pull this back. down. Third pocket done. And one more time. Just flip it over on the central. Take that off. The tape is going to the top this time. First we're going to fold this one back onto it. Off. Again, because the tape's at the bottom, this tape has to be at the top. Put to there again. Bottom and side. Need my tool. Before I go all the way up, remove the tape. And lay it down. So now you have 
four pockets, eight pages in your mini album already. So obviously your fine tune cover makes 10 pages, but you've got one, two, three, four pockets. And then we still got your front in your back. Then we still have a number of other sheets. So if is seven inches by seven inches, there are four of them. This is a nice straightforward one. Each one just gets slotted into a pocket. Now, often with our papers, you get little tabs that you can cut out. It would be ideal to put on this edge of one of these so that people know there's something there to pull out. But each pocket gets pre-cut insert for you. Obviously, you can add more if you'd like. So now, before we even start getting creative, you have front, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pages and back. Four pockets, one, two, three, four. And you have four inserts, which is double-sided. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, another eight pages. So already this album can hold a lot. But Dennis didn't stop there. And for those who know Celebrate, we like to go a little bit beyond. You've also got piece, piece G, 10 pieces of piece G. Piece G is for you to be creative with. It's There's no rules behind piece G. Piece G has been made big enough that you can score and have it flaps, folds. I'm just going to show you on the sample album what was done with piece G. You don't even have to use all of piece G. So piece G, there was a belly band within a belly band. So it's been cut up. There was another pocket just for fun. There's a side flaps top flaps. So cut it up, score, have fun with it. This is part where you need to get creative. Another fold out, another fold out. We'd love to actually see some ideas that you come up with. Looks like a little window. There are so many things you can do with the mini album. So those are just a few ideas. And the size that we've given you gives you enough space to play. You can cut it up, you can do whatever you want, but just creative to make your album yours and special for what you need. And if you look at your photos, if you wanted to put a nice big photo, then you know, okay, you must leave it whole and just trim it or not trim it, score it. This part is purely up to you. You'll see we're doing a class coming up with a mini album and you'll see many ways on how piece G has been used. If you're just starting on mini albums, you can leave piece G aside and just use what you've already created so you don't get overwhelmed. And then these you can use on your normal card making, scrapbooking, whatever you like. It's just nice to have white card stock anyway. So that is your new mini album, a little bit more complicated than our last one, but loads of fun. And if you take it step by step, super easy. Please remember this ruler. This ruler is your friend. You don't have to measure. You just line up your page and doof, 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 doof. Doesn't matter what scoreboard you have. It's absolutely perfect. If you have any questions, though, just pop us a message on Facebook and we'll happily answer you and help as much as we can. Thanks so much, guys. See you. Bye.